My friends, welcome to this very special episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. This is the Colorado 2021 road trip in Susie's van, Packy. This was the first trip out in our van and it was fantastic. With this episode, this is all three parts of that road trip adventure. We drive out there, we camp along the way, then we go to the Lost Creek Wilderness to backpack. From there, we road trip across the state and we end up sleeping next to active nuclear missile silos. It was such a cool adventure and we're excited to share this with you all. When these long movie videos go up, it means that we are either about to leave for another road trip or that we have returned from one. So who knows, you guys have to stay tuned to see what we've been up to. Folks, that will be coming up next week. So kick back, relax, enjoy the movie, get yourself a couple of cups of coffee because this is like two hours and 50 minutes, this movie. So enjoy. We will see you all next week with the first episode of our next road trip. So take care, be well, see you soon. Bye. Hey everyone, it's Susan and Luke here with the Outdoor Gear Review and we are back on the road and this time we are traveling in my Ford Transit van. We are hitting the road this morning to head to Colorado. It will take us a few days and currently we are in Virginia. We are about to hit Kentucky. I'm avoiding Tennessee this time and if you don't know why, go back and watch our adventure to Utah and New Mexico and you'll see why. So no Tennessee this time. I have to say everyone, Susie, you did an awesome job picking out the van. I cannot wait to show it to you all later on. So we've been on the road for a few hours and the goal for this trip is Colorado. We are heading to the Lost Creek Wilderness where we have a 30 plus mile adventure to go on. I cannot wait. Susie, this is going to be epic. Now today's destination is in Illinois. We are looking for a dispersed camp spot. That's roughly 500 miles for the day, something like that, so not too bad. Tonight the plan is to camp in Illinois and Luke is nervous about it. If you saw one of our other trips we ended up camping in Illinois and it was the hottest camping experience that we have ever ever had. This time we are a bit farther up north and it's late into the year. We are well into September and this is the latest that we've ever chosen to travel out to Colorado. There might even be some snow on this trip. Who knows? Illinois. <sighs> That trip was so hot, so humid. Oh man, that was miserable. Anyways, everyone, later on today, we will show you all the van in more detail. Oh yeah. For now, let's drive.
as an update everyone we are still cruising through Kentucky which I think is a very unappreciated state when it comes to going out west there's a few ways that we can go one being through Kentucky one being through Tennessee Tennessee very unpleasant Kentucky absolutely awesome I love Kentucky it's so nice it's so quiet so peaceful there's not many cars on the road and it's a Friday that's awesome I mean Tennessee would have been a madhouse there are way more cities to hit on the trek through Tennessee and so we decided to drive through Kentucky and for us heading out west we will actually drive through the entire state of Kentucky today I think this is the way to go if you're gonna head out west I think you have to cut through Kentucky it's way way better when it comes to driving experiences I'm all about being out in the country low key not that many people low stress that's awesome hopefully the entire trip will be just like that we will see it is update time and we have stopped for gas and to take a small break the great thing about the van is we can actually take a break inside we don't even have to get out i can come back here i'm able to stretch a little bit this is the bedroom it's also the toilet the kitchen everything's all in one space but it's working out really well and so far this trip has been fantastic why don't you share with everyone susie what the name of the van is because all of our vehicles they have names the van's name is Packy. Packy. <laughs> Packy. I wonder how you came up with Packy. There's a Packy back there. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you explain to everybody what Packy means? I love llamas and alpacas, and there's a saying, I'll pack my bags. That's a really cute thing. You'll find it on mugs and keychains. And I had a friend get me a keychain that said like, adventure you say alpaca my bag so i had a alpaca on there and then i grabbed this little pillow and when i found the van i was like we have to call it packy because we're gonna pack a lot of stuff into our van and travel so adventure travel i'm totally up for it and alpaca my bags <laughs> What are you doing, so, Susie? I thought it was nap time. Is it time to take a nap? It's nap time. Mm. <laughs> Good night, Susie. <laughs> it is time for lunch, everyone. Thank you very much, Susie. You're Simple welcome. sandwich chips. We're at some rest area in Kentucky. So as you all can see, we have quite a bit of space here inside of the van. This is sweet. This is sweet. <laughs> it is so comfortable. Yeah, it really is. The van is very new to us, and while we've only had it for just a few months, if that even, we are quickly learning what's working mm -hmm. and where we need to move things. So this is the first big trip with the van, and this would be the first time that we've spent time sleeping in it and camping in it. So I spent a few months just driving and really getting used to the van. This trip is going so smooth. I mm -hmm. think the van is really making it a very comfortable trip. It's so nice not to have to like hop into the back. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. And, and that's what we're accustomed to. If you haven't seen our previous overlanding travel adventures, we have a Toyota Tundra that we've gone all over the country with. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of space here and we have a lot of storage under our bed. Um, but I was just noticing, I was like, oh, we put things in the back that maybe we should keep farther up. So I'm, I'm learning what mm -hmm. works, you know, as we take this across the country, we will learn. But I don't even think I've gotten out because you pumped the gas. So yeah. I haven't even gotten out of the van today <laughs> and we've been driving all day. So it's really nice. And every time you come back here, you just want to lay down. Lay down. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. In 100 feet, 
Turn left onto L and E Railroad Place. Turn left onto L and E Railroad Place, then turn left onto Kentucky 11 North. Well, my friends, we're back on the road again after a nice lunch. We stayed in the vehicle for this eating event, and that's because we were right next to the highway. It was rather loud outside, so we stayed in the van, enjoyed the AC. That was nice. It was very nice. The weather today really is rather pleasant. It's about 78 degrees with low humidity. So, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. I don't think there's any chances of rain, at least for now. So just sit with me, talking to the night until the morning, building cat mystery. I don't think I ever want to go come closer next to me. Trying to find another way to say this, but I think, I think. We are about 130 miles away from our camping spot in Illinois. Currently we are stuck in road construction in Louisville, Kentucky. For today, this is the first slowdown. I think we're going to end up stopping, but that's not bad for, you know, six, seven hours of driving. It's really not bad. This is the first major city that we've hit, so I'm not going to complain about this at all. It's been a really smooth day and hopefully we're gonna pull into our camping spot pretty early, so that will be nice. As a whole, everyone, today has been so low key, so quiet. I would almost say boring, but that's not really it. I mean, it's just been really, really pleasant. An awesome day of travel. Not much to talk about, not much to show you. It's been a good day. Cause you're stuck on my mind. Just sit with me Talking to the night until the morning Building cat mystery I don't think I ever want to go Come closer next to me Trying to find another way to say this But I think, I think We were meant to be Oh, we were meant to be the end of the first day of our trip and we have arrived in Illinois. We are at Beale Woods State Park. They have free camping here. It is first come first serve. There's no reservations. So we weren't sure what to expect when we pulled in. It is a Friday evening and this place is not busy at all. I think there are two other people camping here and that's it. Somehow my friends, Susie has pulled this off again. She always finds like the best campsites. This place is incredible. I mean, it really is. I mean, the level of care that's gone into this place, top notch, really, I'm impressed. Now, what really intrigues me, there's a sign down here that says there's areas in this park that are extremely dangerous. What are they talking about? What's dangerous? That was a little weird. We do not know what's dangerous, so we're going to do a little bit of hiking before we come back and rest and eat. I have no idea. Let's go I find no out. I don't fear danger, folks. So let's do this. Wow, this is really, really cool. No permits, no fees, no one's here. Yeah. This park truly is impressive. Over here is a giant body of water that we're going to check out. It's so quiet. There's no one here. It's almost bizarre. 
would you consider this the like middle of nowhere? Yeah, it is pretty remote and we definitely had to leave the interstate and drive for a good distance off the interstate and that may not be appealing to some people that are traveling. You know, they just want to get to where they're going and they don't want to take too much time. But if you just look, sometimes you'll find these little secret gems and you know, we were really concerned about being able to find camping because it's still that time of the year where people are finishing up last minute trips and they're still out there and a lot of the reservations with campgrounds are full. So this is surprising, but in such a nice way. As far as the weather goes, it's about 82 degrees, about 23% humidity. It feels incredible. So this is pretty cool everyone. We are basically just walking the roads here at the park looking for hiking trails instead of driving to them. The place is so dead. We could walk in the middle of the road <laughs> <laughs> on a Friday. That's awesome. Ah, it feels so good to be out of the van. It really has been a nice day. The miles went by fast, nice and smooth. Traffic wasn't bad. I think it's nice to have a pit stop at the end of the day. And this time while camping in Illinois, we are actually able to get out and enjoy it. It's not so hot, it's not sticky, we're not sweating. So I don't mind doing some walking for a little bit considering we've been driving since 7 a.m. this morning, but this really worked out well. I mean, I'm really blown away that we are able to do this on a Friday night. So Susie and I decided to hit up one of the trails here. By the way, this place is called Bell, not Beale. Bellwood State Park. You see the spelling of it, it looks like Beale, but after reading more of the history, we learned that it's pronounced Bell. And it's for the family that owned this land and the property. It was a working farm. And after it was sold, I think someone wanted to cut all the wood and everyone got together and they did not want that to happen. And so the area has been preserved. It is one of the oldest hardwood forests still around. And the trees here are very, very cool. I've seen some very large ones. It is a little buggy though. All of the trails here are rather short. So we are going to do a short trail, head back to the van, get dinner going. I'm hungry. Susie, are you hungry? I'm hungry. There's not much water, at least in the ravine here. As for the hike, it's not bad. It's very quiet and I think that's the most beautiful part. Japanese inspired dish. So I have cooked up some ground turkey meat and we're going to throw some spinach and it's a salad mix so it has carrots and stuff in it and I'm gonna throw it into the pot and saute all of that up.
All right, folks, it is time for dinner. We were going to eat outside, but the mosquitoes all of a sudden got really bad. So scratch that idea. We're inside of the van. I'm ready for Susie's Asian dish. It smells really good. It does smell good. Ladies first. All right, let's give it a go. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That is good. Yeah, there's more sauce too. I like mm -hmm. it. I cannot believe how quiet this park is. It's amazing. Surprising. <laughs> it's awesome. You found this place by looking at some website, right? What was it? So when we start traveling, I start planning with an app called Road Trippers. And I'm able to plan the route that we're going to take and look for places to stop along that route. And the great thing about it is you can set how far off your route that you want to go. And the farther off you go, the more chances that you're going to find a place like this. So right. I was willing to go like 30 miles off of our route. And this is what we found. So. Yeah. Well, this is sweet. Yeah. Everyone, we're pretty tired, so we're pretty much done talking. But, um, yeah. Dinner time. Dinner time for sure. I will say that even with the app and when I find a place, I still do additional research. So I looked up this place, I tried to get user reviews, see what the vibe about it was. You know, just because a place is on the map, you still need those oh, yeah. user reviews. You need to kind of get a feel of where you're going to end up at and it really does help. This evening has been really fantastic, really smooth. It is a little bit warm here, and we did have the doors open, but then we decided we would close them and just use our fans. So we definitely don't need blankets or anything like that. But I'm just so tired. I think with the fan, I'm going to sleep good. And we're all locked in. I'm definitely just ready for bed. I would say right now the temperature's around 75 degrees, but with the fans going, it feels great. Mm. Again, it's all about airflow. I've mentioned this before in previous overlanding episodes. You can basically deal with any temperature as long as you have airflow. So like one little fan, you're good to go. So uh, good night for now, everyone. Sleep good. We'll see you all in the morning. Bye for now. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. We are waking up. It's a very quiet morning here. We realized that the other camper that was camping here, they are gone. They left in the middle of the night. Yeah, so we've had this entire place to ourselves. It's really quiet today. And today is a big push travel day. So we got to make a lot of miles and a lot of hours. So we better get coffee and get going. Good morning, everybody. It is beautiful here. It's nice and cool. <laughs> Check this out. The entire place is ours. No one's here. That's pretty nuts, really. Saturday morning, and we had this entire park to ourselves. Folks, we're on the road again. It is eight o'clock in the morning. We got a little bit later of a start that we wanted to, but we were sleeping so good. <laughs> I woke up at like, I don't know, 5.30, but then I kind of dozed back off. Oops, so. 
But yeah, for a Saturday morning, pretty low key, not much traffic so far. But last night was awesome. That was a really nice campground. Super impressed. I can't wait to see where we camp at tonight. Susie, any ideas? I think the plan for tonight is to find a rest area. Today is one of those days where we're going to drive um, almost till the sun sets and then just pull off and rest. And the good thing about that is that means tomorrow we won't have such a long day and we will be arriving in Colorado. So yeah, nothing too exciting tonight except a rest area, but uh, that is just how it goes. One of the trips out here to Colorado, we went through Kansas and we stayed at a really nice state park. We did check that out before we left, but since it is a Saturday, it was almost fully booked. And because there were only like one or two spots left, we decided that we just didn't want to do that. So rest area tonight and tomorrow, Colorado. It's funny folks, sometimes you will get the best sleep at a rest area, even when compared to a campground. So it's pretty funny. Folks, let's do this. Today, everyone, is 9-11, so as we're driving on the interstate here, there are people standing on the overpasses, and they're waving flags, and some of them are military, some are police, some are first responders, firefighters. It is so cool. It really is. It's a really good feeling to see those people standing out to make sure that we do not forget 9-11. I think we should all take maybe five seconds to remember everybody that was lost on that day, so... Susie just saw something, folks. <laughs> I almost missed it. Susie saw it with her hawk vision. What did you see? I saw a bald eagle sitting in a tree by the river as we're traveling. It just feels like the most patriotic day. We're traveling down the interstate and at every overpass we have the 9-11 memorials happening and then to drive and see the bald eagle. It was huge. I mean, just on the side of the road, what a great sighting this morning. That was the biggest bald eagle I've ever seen. It's huge. It is lunchtime, so it's pit stop break time. And we are gonna make some wraps and eat some, I think hummus and carrots and some fruit. And then we will get some more time in. I would say that we've done what maybe half of our time today yeah, Close? Something like that. yeah so I think we're doing pretty good with time wise and it is very hot where are we I don't know Missouri Missouri it's very hot wherever we are it's about 88 it is 88 degrees here there is a breeze but it is just hot so it feels much better inside of the van So when it comes to our backpacking trip, we are headed to Colorado, like we said before. We're going to the Lost Creek Wilderness, which is a really cool place. The Lost Creek like gets lost in these big slabs of granite. So like you, you have the creek and then it disappears and then it reemerges later on. It is a beautiful place. Cannot wait to go. 
But there are a few question marks in play, mainly with smoke. Uh, there's a bunch of forest fires out west. You can see some of the smoke in the sky here. Mm -hmm. So how bad is it going to be? I don't know. There's going to be some no matter what. Right. We've been trying to check a map, and the last time we checked it, it said it was light. So maybe by the time we actually get there and start our backpacking trip, maybe it will be gone. I know when we went to the Holy Cross Wilderness, we really got smoked out. We were able to do the trip, but the smoke really started bothering me, and so I was ready to leave and get out of that area. It makes it hard to breathe, and higher elevations already make it hard to breathe, right. so I was done. I'm hoping it will not be bad this time. We will see, everybody. We will see. What you doing, Susie? Getting my laps in for the day. <laughs> Susie, I have no idea how you can hike out here. Hike around the vehicle when it's like 90 degrees. I'm roasting. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot, folks. It's hot. Just had to stretch my legs. Yeah. It does feel good to get out. Yesterday, when we got to that park, we hiked roughly four miles. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. No hiking today, unless it's a around the van. Laps around the van. <laughs> you are good. One pro to the van that we have quickly found out is that the gas tank is bigger than the Tundra, so we are able to do less stopping. And that is kind of nice. We always said in the Toyota Tundra that we didn't mind stopping as often as it is a good break to stretch our legs, but with the van we are making better time it seems. There's pros and cons to everything of course. Nice and easy, baby. I love it. I love these big gas stations out west. I wish we had stuff like that at home. I mean, you can go to the gas station, you can get a meal, you have the gigantic window squeegees. There's like a hundred pumps, hookers at nighttime. It's awesome. Scratch that last Wait, part. Cut that part out. <laughs> what do they call them? Lot lizards? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Let's go. Thinking that I could have done something But now I'm left with an empty heart No making amends No waking up beside you And holding you till we forget it all How could I know there was no second chances Like dominoes, my life got really scattered You couldn't keep the door shut Good morning, Susie. Good morning. How'd you sleep? Slept great. The van is awesome. So comfy in here. A quick update is that today is day three and we will be arriving in Colorado. Yesterday was a super long day of driving. We drove pretty much as soon as we got up and got out. Pretty early start, really and then we drove until the sun set. We ended up just grabbing a pizza to eat for dinner and we ate and went to bed. So 
Today is a much shorter day and we will be in Colorado and I can't wait. I mentioned before that being comfortable inside of a vehicle is all about airflow and we truly proved that last night, did we not? Yes, I think I left out a very important part <laughs> of day two. We are in Kansas and I don't know what it is about Kansas. It is so hot. I did not expect it to be this hot this late into the year. So the sun is setting. We're driving to the rest area that we know we're staying at and the temperature keeps going up. I'm not kidding. It was 97 degrees and I'm like, what is going on? I mean, how can it be that hot at nighttime? So we pull in, we eat, we do have some vents for our front windows for airflow and we have fans and that's all that we have. So we were not sure if we were gonna make it. So the plan was rest and then we would just have to do some night driving. We turned everything off, had our fans on, slept great. It is so comfortable in here, you would not even believe it. We have three of these little USB fans and they work great. Very inexpensive, they don't use much power. And I mean, we stayed super comfortable. I was not even warm last night. Like I was just perfectly comfortable, slept great. Well, if you're grabbing a fleece blanket and you're sleeping in an area where it's like 98 degrees, then wow. I mean, seriously, we went to sleep. I ended up grabbing a blanket later on, covering up, slept so good. It was kind of funny. It's like <laughs> five minutes before we made it here, it hit like 103 degrees. It was weird. <laughs> it was so flippin' hot. <laughs> but yeah, the van worked great. It's time to get up, get coffee. It is 6.30. So let's get up. Coffee time. By the way, the uh, cheeseburger pizza from Domino's is awesome. That's my favorite. Yeah. We are definitely suckers for Domino's. I don't even know if you've ever told the story, but one time Luke and I were grabbing Domino's and we ran into people that recognized us and they like could not believe it was us. They were just like, oh my gosh, it's so cool to see you. So yeah, we love the cheeseburger pizza. You are now good. And here we go, everyone. Continue on I-70 West for 176 miles. Susie and I both slept great at the rest area last night. It was very quiet, peaceful. It was a good night. It was a great a night. A really good night. Today is pretty simple. Let's make our way to Colorado. We have some decision making to make once we get there because the weather forecast has changed for our backpacking trip. Monday, nice. Tuesday, awful. High around 49 degrees. Rain and thunderstorms, low around 30. So that's definitely different than what we originally planned for. We have the gear for it, no big deal, but it's something to think about. <laughs> we shall see. We're going to stop at a rest area in about 30 miles and make coffee and stuff like that. Where we slept at is like a pull-off where you can sleep, so we didn't want to make a whole bunch of noise and wake people up and all that stuff, so yeah. Today is going to be a great day. What do you think? Colorado or bust? Yes. yes. Here we go. There's a lot of colors. I don't know where to go. See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze The dreams are not the same for me after about an hour and a half on the road, we are stopping and getting our breakfast. It was one of those mornings where we just took off so that we wouldn't wake others that were sleeping around us, and we finally made hot coffee. We're gonna have some muffins and bananas and get back on the road. 
Today is going to be so good because we are going into lower temperatures and we are arriving early. So I can't wait to see where we will camp at tonight. With the Lost Creek Wilderness area, the road to get there is 19 miles long, all gravel, and apparently there are some awesome campsites along the way. So yeah, we will cruise the road, find a place to camp, and I can't wait. Standing by the shore While you're on the open sea Cannot take this anymore It's funny folks, we just crossed the line from Kansas into Colorado and the roads suck! So bad. <laughs> I forgot just how bad these roads are. It's all coming back to me. Me too. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> what does this state spend their money on? I have no idea. Gravel, maybe? I don't know. Not their roads. <laughs> <laughs> we are just inside of Colorado now. We just stopped and got gas. Holy crap. We paid four dollars a gallon we've been paying less than like 290 for the majority of this trip i think the highest was like 298 or something or other that's a jump on a positive note the sky here is amazing this truly is big sky country wow love it it's good to be back <laughs> It's good to be back in the land of like the uh, adventure van. So there's another adventure van. With the van that we went with, it costs less than the uh, Sprinter base model with like no walls, no nothing, no windows. We'll talk more about that in the future, but we did very well with the purchase of this van. Very inexpensive compared to most of the overland options that are out there. We went with a short wheelbase and a low roof for transit. And we will explain more into detail later on why it really is budget friendly in all aspects. It really does pretty darn good on gas and it's very affordable to insure as well. So there's many reasons why this is a budget friendly version. Also, we'll talk about why we went with the low roof option. For us and for driving across the country, it does make a difference, trust me. There are a lot of voices drowning in the sea There's too many voices talking back at me There are a lot of choices waiting to be made Too many choices making me afraid
Susie and I have made it to the Lost Creek Park Road, and this is pretty sweet, folks. This road is 19 miles long. It is just gravel and dirt, and it takes an hour and a half to make it to the end. <laughs> or I should say it takes an hour and a half to make it to the campground. I'm not sure how much further it goes, but yeah, it's really beautiful. Some awesome views. All the aspen trees, they're changing colors already. Susie, that is an epic campsite. This is the best. Wow. Wow, everywhere you look, it's like wow. This is one of the most amazing campsites I've ever been to. I mean, check this out. Look at that. It's amazing. Okay, now let's go over here. What? It is incredible this is what we came out here for it really is isn't it yes camping on a mountain looking at mountains doing some hiking incredible views at your campsite wow wow when we started out here it was about 80 degrees and now i have chill bumps and i'm gonna have to put on some more clothes i think we're looking at temps in the 60s it feels great but it's definitely chilly what we have here, everyone, is a product called Skeeter Beater. And you have basically mesh with magnets that go around it. And we have these for the front and the back so you can have awesome airflow inside of the van. Keeps the bugs out. Good product. Many years ago, I reviewed this product for the Forerunner. Still expensive, but still very useful. Now that we're situated for the evening, we are going to have a late lunch. We're going to have a turkey wrap, a salad, a couple pieces of pizza, and then we plan to hike up this mountain here. I don't see a trail, but it looks awesome. So we will do some hiking. That's the plan. Basically, everyone, we are going to unwind for a little bit. Susie, are you done driving or do you want to drive some more? I am done driving <laughs> for at least a few days. Yeah. It is now time to walk. Lunch was good, coffee was great. Now everyone, let me show you all around this campsite. First off, super nice fire pit. There's some wood, and there is no shortage of wood. With a little bit of effort, you can go up here, all the wood in the world. Heading over here into the woods, there are some awesome rocks that are worthy of exploring. 
We have been staring at the forest across the road from us and it looks very clear under the canopy. So for now we're going to hike up there and see what it's like. As you all can imagine and what you've seen in our videos, the forest here is very much different than what we are accustomed to in North Carolina. In North Carolina everything's very very thick, very bushy. There's so much undergrowth, but up here, I mean, check this out. You can go anywhere you want to, basically unobstructed. And that's awesome. You can see where this was logged a long time ago. Fairly aggressive. The clear forest here though, I mean, it's just incredible. That tree has some amazing colors to it. This forest really is amazing, but it's getting dark, it's getting late, and we are getting hungry. So we are going to head back to the van, have dinner before it gets dark, and then call it a night, everyone. We have a bunch of hiking to do tomorrow. Are you ready to head back, Susie? Yes, I'm ready. We have a big backpacking trip to do, and it's gonna be one of those trips where we don't have any cell phone service, so we're not able to check the weather, so we're just gonna commit and I guess pay attention to what the sky looks like. I'm excited, but I think I'm ready to call it an evening. Susie and I are back in the nick of time because it's raining. <laughs> Not hard, but it's sprinkling. The drops are like this big. The weather is confused, isn't it, Susie? Yes, it is. So the sun's out and it's raining. Look at that sky, everyone. Hmm, is it going to rain? I think so. It could be raining right over there on the other side of that ridge. We'll find out soon enough. Dinner's almost ready. Woo, we are having green beans, cheeseburgers with bacon, Oh yeah, a nice good meal before we hit the trail tomorrow. That is, without a doubt, rain. You can see it falling over there. You can see it coming. Yeah. And it is coming this way. I think we're gonna have to move inside. I think so too. It looks like it's coming directly for us. I know, so either we have to like scarf this down and clean up, or we can just clean up and get inside and enjoy dinner. Let's do that. So let's do that. Everyone, it's raining, and yes, a double rainbow outside of our van. <laughs> that is awesome. Our adventure, everyone, begins right here, the Lost Park Campground, which is part of the Pike National Forest. For this trip, we have roughly 34 miles to hike. If you look online for this trail, the mileage varies. Some people say it's 28, some people say it's 34, I've seen 36, so who really knows? It's right around the 30 mile mark, something like that. Our goal for today is to head right up here. That is Bison Peak. Once we get up there, we'll decide if we want to go to the summit or not. Otherwise, we may just go over the mountain and start heading down. Our goal is roughly 13 miles for today. A few points to mention, folks. If you plan to come out here and do this trip, the road is not bad at all. It is gravel. The first mile or two is rough, but then it gets rather smooth. You can easily do this in a car. You do not need four-wheel drive or anything like that. 
With this trek, it is a loop, and there's two ways to go about it. Clockwise and counterclockwise. We are going counterclockwise. As far as unknowns go with this trip, the biggest question mark is weather. Prior to our arrival, it was supposed to be beautiful conditions, highs in the 60s, low in the 40s. We show up yesterday, the forecast changed. Storms yesterday, today's supposed to be nice, 60 degrees, low around 40. Tomorrow, high 50, low 30, <laughs> with rain and thunderstorms. So this morning, we woke up, it was 29 degrees further off down the mountain here. So uh, <laughs> these forecasts are way, way off. I love it. It's all part of the adventure, you know what I mean? Luckily, Susie and I, we're prepared. We can handle this and anything else. This is what I refer to as the wash plants. Everything is wet from the frost this morning. So as you walk through, your clothing rubs against those plants and you get a nice good wash. Wash plants. <laughs> This trail starts at the campground, the Lost Park Campground, and it is a fee area. We were lucky enough to snag a really cool dispersed camping site last night when we arrived here. So that was pretty neat. So keep that in mind if you do come here. It is a fee area or there's dispersed camping along the road. We've made it to the Lost Creek Wilderness. Haha. <laughs> Time to get our permits, they are free. It is 29 degrees everyone, and I'm hot. Hot already. So the jacket must come off. The name of the game today is Elevation Gain. We are going up, up, and up. Originally we had planned on making our way up to Bison Peak and camping there, but with it being 29 degrees at a lower elevation last night. Forget about it. <laughs> we are going up and over. So far the hike is extremely pleasant. The trails are beautiful, the forest is beautiful. Whenever we stop for a break, I'll show you all the map and we'll talk about the elevation gain with this trip. By the way, folks, there is no cell phone service, so put your phones in airplane mode, use the GPS, and rock and roll. What's interesting about this trail, once you get into the forest, it is a very faint trail. <laughs> I mean, at points in time, you're kind of wondering, hmm, Am I on a trail or does it go this way or that way? Make sure to have a good map or GPS program. For this trip, I have both. The GPS program that I'm using is All Trails. And that is pretty sweet. It shows water sources and also campsites. And I can tell by looking at the map that at the third water crossing, I need to fill up because there's no more water after that point. And then we go up and over Bison Peak. I mentioned before that you can go clockwise or counterclockwise. If you go clockwise, you are going to go up the mountains with the incredible views to your back, which you may not want. We're going counterclockwise. So once we get to the top, we have the views and we get to enjoy them while we're coming down. Counterclockwise is definitely more popular than clockwise. Susie and I, we are doing this trail in the beginning of September and already summer is over. 
We are into fall now. 29 degrees this morning. Heavy frost. Warm days. Cool nights. That's awesome. When you start hiking on this trail, you may not see any markers, but they are there, right here on the trees. What you have are double scars. One, two. Those are the markers that you're following for this trail. And the name of this trail is Brookside McCurdy. And that's because there's a brook to your right while you're hiking it. It does not take long to warm up. It is time to shed some layers. Ah, oh, that's so much better. Who are you talking to? Us? Or this one? I think they're telling us to get out of here. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> they're very mad at us. Yeah, they are. That used to be a fence. As you can see, it has fallen down. There used to be a sign here that said, close the gate, even though there was no gate. And that's pretty funny. Unfortunately, it looks like someone stole it. Wow, look at how gorgeous that is. You have the yellows, the oranges, or some pink, some red, a little bit of green. <laughs> this is the perfect time of year to come out here to do this trip. You do have to be prepared for it though. The nights are going to be super cold and the storms that come through can be vicious. What's on the menu this morning, Susie? We're gonna eat a big bar and some beef jerky. This stuff is awesome. It's really, really good. Best beef jerky ever. Mm hmm It's actually tender and not so tough to like chew through. All right, folks. Susie and I are taking a break. Let's take a second here and look at the map. So we started up here. This is the campground. We're going counterclockwise and we're taking the Brookside McCurdy Trail. So we are right around here. Our mission is to go all the way to right about here or so. That's 12,392 feet. With this hike, we're looking at an overall elevation gain of roughly 6,000 feet over the course of 30 something miles. Taking a look at the sky, it's getting a little dark. At this time, I'm not concerned. I think this will pass by with no issues. Cross your fingers, Susie. Hiking in your rain gear, Kind of sucks. I don't want to do that. <laughs> mm -mm. We will likely have to do that tomorrow. So hopefully not today, folks. Wow, folks. Susie and I just had a National Geographic moment. And yes, my mouth is full. This huge hawk or owl or something just flew by. I was able to walk out here and get a picture of it. It's amazing. What is that thing? I don't know. Maybe a hawk, but I'm not sure. Susie and I, we went off trail to have our snack there. Nothing is worse than being right next to the trail and having to talk to everybody that goes by. <laughs> the lone wolf in me, it's strong. We are in roughly three miles and there is easy access to water, so don't worry about hiking in a whole bunch to start with. 
if you're going counterclockwise, that is. I haven't mentioned this before, but it should be said, this is a very difficult trail. So far, it's been nice and easy, but things will change. This will get difficult. I have not seen anyone mention this being an easy trail. Everybody says it's very difficult. That is water crossing number one there, folks. There's two more before we start really heading up. At the third crossing, we will grab three additional liters of water and make the push up to Bison Peak. Absolutely gorgeous, folks, gorgeous. Susie and I, we continue to go up. We're putting on some sunblock chapstick. Good stuff. Good stuff. Having a sunburned face, not too much fun. Having sunburned lips, awful. Very painful. Super painful. Gross to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. Won't do it again. Looking at the map, our second water crossing should be coming up. And right here it is, actually. So we have one more to go. I will camel up there. That'll give us five liters of water to go up and over the mountain. Hopefully you all can see it. Little critter right there. Is that a chipmunk? That's a big chipmunk. I don't know what it is. is Small it? squirrel. <laughs> Huge chipmunk. Yeah. Permission to pass, Guardian. You cool with it? As you all can see, the landscape has changed dramatically. And it is beautiful. There's a nice breeze in the air. At the same time, the sun's popping in and out. I call it the perfect day. All right. This is the last stop for water, everyone. This is our water bag. You may be familiar with this. The Catadyne Bee Free 3 liter bag. We've taken this all across the country. It's never let us down. The bag itself is a little weird, but we like it. That's about two and a half liters. That's enough. As I plunge right into the water. Please don't fall. <laughs> our goal is to keep our feet dry until at least the last day. I think on the last day, I've read that you will get your feet wet. So we will see about that. All right. There's some weight in this now. I would say my pack is probably close to 40 pounds, maybe, something like that. So, that's a little bit of weight.
can see Bison Peak up here, and it is awesome. It is awesome. Our plan originally was to hike that, but because of the bad weather tomorrow, we might have to skip it. Tomorrow was going to be our big mile day, but we might have to make that today instead. Since the last water crossing, it has been up, up, and up. Yeah. Tired, kitty? Tired. Hot, kitty? Hot. <laughs> Hot and tired. It's a good steady trek uphill here. I'm basically in turtle mode, right? Slow and steady, step by step. Hiking mode engaged. Turtle mode engaged. All right, everyone. We've made it to a junction. We have Ute Creek going straight ahead. We have Brookside McCurdy Trail going this direction. It's interesting, it has arrows on both sides insinuating that it actually goes this way, but there is no trail there. It's only one direction. So I'm going to check out the map. So I'll show you where we are at, folks. Started here, filled up here. This is Ute Creek, right there. So we're gonna continue on towards McCurdy Mountain. We have Bison Peak over here. That's the plan. Okay, we're on Ute Creek actually. We wanted to go to the top here and just see what the view is like. This is just beautiful, Susie. Uh -huh. And it's our trip, we can go where we want. <laughs> That's true. Hell, we could camp right here if we want to. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Finally, it's like mountains that remind me of our mountain. Sure. You know? We are quite a bit further south than we typically go here in Colorado for our adventures. It's different. Taking a breather, Susie? Yes. Folks, this is level, so you could see what the trail looks like. This is level here. We are at 11,100 and blah blah feet. Going straight up. We should have only maybe a thousand foot more to go, something like that. That's all, so. That is a view, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. I'm not sure if you all could see this, but there's a bunny right there. Hi, little cutie. Hi. You're so little. Oh my gosh. What shall we name it? Um. How about bison? Bison. Woo! It is raining right over there. That's pretty far off though. I will be honest, this is disorienting as F. <laughs> like right on this edge, trying to look, it's uh, sickening. Whew. 
we are almost up here, folks. That has been grueling. Oh, man. This is incredible. Wow. Unbelievable. Look at this. Since we can see rain in the distance, we are going to continue on. This is Bison Peak up here. That's awesome. You can climb this. There is no path, no trail. It's one of those pick your own adventure sort of things. You can camp out up here. There's all sorts of like secluded spots behind these rocks. And I think Susie and I are going to find one and have lunch. We're hiking along here. We have these amazing rocks. It feels very much like a desert out here, don't it? Yes. Wow. Woo, Susie. So we are headed over there, everyone. That's where we're going. Woo. We got bison done and we're going to be heading to McCurdy Peak next, but first we're going to have a quick snack. The clouds are looking pretty dark up here so we won't linger too long. After all of that uphill, we need a break. I hauled up like four liters of water. That I know. was steep. It was really steep, folks. It was incredibly tough. Yeah. I mean, really tough. I'm not going to lie, I'm absolutely exhausted after doing that peak, so a little break and I can do some more. It is tough though, just be aware. We just finished up with our snack, had some water. All good. All good, ratty. All good, crook. All good. What's that from? Comment down below. We've been out here in this exposed area quite a while. Hat on, long sleeve shirt, put the legs back onto my pants, a little bit of sunblock. Everyone, it is incredible. There are awesome rock formations everywhere. I mean, we have this one. Check this one out. Incredible. As far as the rain goes, right over here <laughs> right across this mountain somehow we've gotten lucky no rain so far i think we are in good shape at least for now The rock formations out here are awesome, folks. They really are. We are hiking up in between these two, and they are just very, very neat.
The battle continues, everyone. Right now, we are basically going around McCurdy Mountain. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a little steep, but the trip is going good. All right, everybody, it is time for lunch. It's two o'clock and it is time for a break. I mean, talk about one of the most amazing places ever to take a break at. I mean, look at this. It's incredible. Take a look at that, folks. Susie and I have been looking at the map. Where we are at, we are basically at the point of like going downhill. Like major, major downhill. Mm -hmm. Like six, seven miles of it. Mm. I can't wait. It's gonna be so good. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> we have done so much uphill today. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've hauled so much water. There better not be water right around the corner. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hopefully not. I felt bad you had so much water, but the uphill is no joke. You just take breaks, power through. I think yeah. we've been really good about taking breaks and I know I'm feeling pretty good. It's mid afternoon and I mean, I feel like I could definitely hike on and on. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see, our ultimate goal we decided, originally I think we said like 12, 13 miles. Scratch that. We're doing like 17, almost 18. Yeah, if it's downhill, why not? It's all downhill, so let's just make a major slam, especially since there's a high chance of rain tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a possibility we could wrap this up tomorrow. Yeah, Possibly. or if it's terrible weather, we may hike very few miles oh, and yeah. like hunker down. I mean, no we'll just one... spend a day on top of the mountain, just exactly <laughs> in the tent. Nobody wants to hike like 12 miles in rain gear. It's so awful. We can do a little bit, yeah. but. There's no cell phone service out here at all. I mean, we have not had any, and I don't expect to. I think mm -hmm. this is so remote that you should not plan on having any cell phone service. So you're unable to check the weather or keep in touch with anybody. I love being unplugged, though. Oh, yeah. Me too. This trail is incredibly nice. This is a secret gem, and I even hesitate even telling everybody where this is at because we're hiking through here. And like the trail, it is faint. Mm -hmm. It is incredible. And there's firewood everywhere, campsites everywhere. Nobody comes out here and uses them. I mean, seriously, there's firewood everywhere. Y you could tell how much usage an area gets by how much firewood is left over. <laughs> yeah. This is not getting much use. No. I mean, we go to places all the time, no firewood. Heavy, heavy use. This is unbelievable. It is. We saw one person on the trail today. Uh, he passed us. It was a guy, younger guy. Looked like he was going to go do some bouldering or something. Had like a big pad sort of thing. But um, the interesting thing about that guy, he didn't just have a walking stick. <laughs> he had a walking log. It was, I think that it was a log. It classifies as a log. It mm -hmm. was about five feet long. <laughs> he just... It was a log. He was propelling himself up the mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I, know. I was like, oh, what the heck? Is that? Someone's going to die. Yeah. He said it was tough, and he was a lot younger than we are. And he was carrying a log. So. A log. <laughs> okay, we, we are going to eat. Stop talking. Uh, there is a little bit of rain actually falling right now. So we need to eat and wrap this up. We have some a uh, curry mango chicken salad for lunch. Ladies first. Hold this. I gotta put the mayonnaise in. I thought it was ready. <laughs> He's impatient. <laughs> I, we've had enough time. Uh, we should we should be on the trail now. I, I gotta go. Okay? He's like, <laughs> he doesn't even want to take a break. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> We are back on the trail after a nice lunch. The rain moved past us. There are some pretty dark clouds, but luckily they are going away from us. The views up here are incredible. 
all these strange rock formations. Here in a moment, we will begin going down, down, and down. Those views, the camera does not do them justice. Stunning. mentioned the dark clouds right that is basically where we are headed this just formed it's raining not very heavy but it is coming down you can almost make out a rainbow right over there but um by the time we get there it should be gone Rain is starting to fall again, and we are underneath one dark cloud. Let's go, kitty. This trail is almost like a scenic overload. Everywhere you look, there's incredible views. We can't film it all, it's impossible. You will have to come up here and experience this. I've never seen anything quite like it before. This is the episode of wows, amazings, incredibles. It's crazy, look at that. All right, folks, we are at the point now where we are heading straight down. All of the hard work that we've done today to get up will now be rewarded by going down. So we get to end the day with a lot of downhill. And I am glad. It gets to a point when you're hiking uphill that you do just kind of get exhausted. So you either have to take more breaks or call it quits for that day. So with us being able to end with downhill, we'll be able to get more miles in. As you all can see here, the landscape has changed quite a bit. We're coming down off of the peaks, heading into the forest. Now we're making some really good progress. Everyone, we have made it to a campsite. We're set up. It is beautiful here. I mean, check this out. Over here, we have the tent. We have a big fire pit, large rocks. We have water over here. We're set. 
Now we are right next to the trail, but most campsites in this area are right next to the trail. So get used to that. It's getting late. We shouldn't have any hikers coming through. I mean, if they're coming through, they have serious problems because there's no campsites close to here and it is definitely getting dark. So, and uh, also they can't stay with us. So hi Susie, how do you feel? Feels so good. Yes. Quitting time is the best. It is time to quit. Yes. Now it's time for food and time to rest and relax. And I'm ready for it. Me too. We couldn't resist but make a cup of coffee to share, even though it's late. We just have to get our coffee in every day. We're munching, we have dinner cooking. The rest of the evening is simple. We're going to get all of this done, get ready for bed, get inside of the tent, hopefully before it gets dark, and then we're just going to rest and relax. How many miles did we do, Susie? Well, I do have an Apple Watch that tracks, but it ended up dying because it's been on all day. And so I had already tracked us at like 14 miles when it died. So okay, let's check hopefully my it's accurate. I don't know. 17.43 miles is what I've clocked. Whoa. These are filming miles, yeah. which are different than, I mean, because oftentimes I'm running ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to see what the view is, coming back, setting up the shot and all that stuff. People don't know what it takes to make a video, but it's so time consuming. It adds so many miles to a regular trip. It's a lot of work. And it just is. carrying the camera, we tried to take turns so I could take the burden off of him some, but it's heavy. <laughs> That's what know? we call it, the burden. Yeah, we call it the burden. So, I mean, <laughs> imagine doing all of the uphill trekking, holding a camera. I'm going to flip this over. At the end of the day, <laughs> it's all good. Here, have some of this, but don't okay. flip. Why are you flipping it? Because I'm massive. I'm huge. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Can you check the map of and see our mileage on the map? Nope. Yes, I could. <laughs> mm. Animal crackers? Yeah. <laughs> Animal crackers by themselves. Animal crackers and coffee. Oh, yeah. I love animals. That's a koala, I think. Is it? Mm -hmm. For today, we saw some squirrels. We saw one bunny and we either saw a really big deer or a female elk. We're not sure. And we saw some other little ground things, maybe like chipmunk, but it wasn't a chipmunk. So this has us at roughly 13 and a half miles, something like that. But everyone says the mileage is off on this map, and I believe it. There's just too many people with like 30 something miles. All Trail says that this is 28.3, so I don't know. Who knows? It doesn't really matter in the end. No, it doesn't matter. But we stopped so we could have time to set up. We could film this. It's for you all that we stopped. Not because we're super, super tired. I'm tired. There's a bee. Yeah. I'm beat. Just a yellow jacket. He's just, just smelling okay. you. But yeah, I'm tired, folks. It's been a really really hard day it's funny it's like everyone that we passed and we passed let's see one two three four people total all mm -hmm. day long everyone is tired everyone's like oh man this uphill it's brutal it is brutal yeah <laughs> and all the downhill that we have been doing all afternoon you do not want to do that the other way i would not want to go clockwise and have to tackle all of that it is non-stop. So the way that we went about this, we went counterclockwise. And so it started off pretty mellow and then all of a sudden it just went straight up. Mm -hmm. But the path was very smooth. So coming down from the top, we get to see what clockwise would be. And it is just as grueling, but it's steps. It's just nothing but like steps and big rocks. Yeah. I would not want to do that clockwise. Yeah, it's not that it's like straight up like the section that we did, but it's just, a lot longer of a section with yeah. a lot of like climbing on rocks and it's going to hurt your knees. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna feel it. <laughs> oh good. Gosh. This is a nice campsite. Oh you know, 
something I was gonna talk about. So we've passed a handful of people on the trail. It's funny, it's like I've talked before about like Southern hospitality and what that's like. And so where we're from, if you pass someone on the trail, the odds are they're going to stop and talk to you for like 20 minutes. It could be incredibly irritating. Mm -hmm. That It's that Southern hospitality, people want to talk. Out here, no one wants to talk. Hey, how are you? Have a good one. Yeah, I've noticed that they all say like, enjoy your day, like, moving on. Enjoy Gotta yourself. Go. I'm, going, I'm doing the same. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anytime I'm on the trail and I see one, I'm always like, ugh, here it comes. Like either it's gonna be short and sweet or it's gonna be like an hour long conversation. Yeah. So with that, we eat. Or with that, we drink coffee. I don't know what we're doing, I'm tired. I'll feed you. Okay. And my puppies. Um, um, um. Aren't they good? Mm hmm. If you can scoot this back, let me pick this up. Scoot this bottom one back? Yeah. Not very easily. Okay. Well, that might be enough right there. Put your weight on it. Tell you what, everyone, this is a great way to end the evening. I mean, we have like this monolith up here. Incredible. Incredible. I tell you what, this place is very special. You could tell like it gets some traffic, but it's not overrun like most of the trails in Colorado. I mean, there were times where I was kind of like, are we on a trail? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. This is a secret gym and it's a hard one. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah, like this trail was rated as like extremely hard. I'd say that it's difficult. It's going to give you a good workout. As I'm sitting here, my, my legs are shaking just from like fatigue. We do have some firewood here, but we're not going to have a fire. There's enough fires in Colorado right now, so. Nope, we don't need one. Nah. Good night, it is time for us to sleep and rest. Yeah, it is. 5.30 comes early, that's when I like to get up. Susie wants to wait for the sun, but I'll get up and, I don't know, read or something. Well, it's cold in Colorado without the sun, so I'm concerned sure. that we'll wake up and it will be freezing cold and I'm just not gonna be able to get going and hike until <laughs> the sun is up. Nothing is worse than getting out of like your warm sleeping bag like on those cold mo mornings. I mean, it's just, it's such a chore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this morning was an eye opener. I mean, no forecast called for what we woke up to. 29 degrees. So cold. I have no idea if it's going to be that cold or not tomorrow morning. Um, it's definitely not as cold now as it was yesterday at the same time. So, yeah, I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen. We shall see. But we're in the tent tonight. Ready to call it a night. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Yeah, me too. Everybody, good night. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us for day one. We'll see what happens tomorrow. We might make it two more days or we could wrap it up. You never know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Good night, folks. Good night. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is almost 7 o'clock. The sun is coming up. Our monolith here is glowing orange. It is beautiful. It is a chilly morning. It's in the 40s, maybe 30s. No frost. Nothing froze. Susie and I both slept great. Didn't hear anything last night. I mean... <laughs> We got inside of the tent like at 7.30, and by 8 o'clock, we were asleep. So, we almost slept like 12 hours. <laughs> That's fine. But, 
Yeah, today is going to be a good day. To start off, going to grab some water from the creek. Might as well do that now, actually. Great. Susie hot, Luke lukewarm. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. Thank you. How are you? Good. Good. That's a double nasty blend. Double nasty. <laughs> we call it the upgrade. I've switched. To the upgrade. Yum. <laughs> Instant vomit. The first sip of the day. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. Cheers, Monolith. Cheers. Cheers. Look at that thing. Wow. It's awesome. <laughs> In this campsite here, we are surrounded by gigantic orange rocks. Over here is a huge mountain. In front of us, behind us, this thing <laughs> over here. It truly is an awesome sight. Mm hmm Yeah. It is. It worked out well. Super quiet. I have no idea what we are in store for today. The last weather forecast we had was 50% chance of rain and storms. And that changed multiple times the same day because at one point in time, it was 70%. Mm -hmm. So, who knows. It was also supposed to be much colder today and so far, it doesn't really feel that way. Mm -mm. My hunch is that the weather's going to be good. Yeah, we'll see. Oh man. This has been an awesome trip so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, these mountains are really, really unique. And there's some sort of bird here that's really unique as well. It looks like a blue jay, right? The body, but the head is completely black and it has like these funky feathers on top. And I think that's what's making that noise right now. I could be wrong about that, but it's a really weird bird. If anybody knows what it is, comment down below. Our uh, <laughs> yellow jacket friend is back. Have you noticed that? Well, he came inside the tent, uh, and then he left. He's inquisitive. What you do with yellow jackets, they're very inquisitive bees. Oftentimes they'll come up to you, just hover around, stay around. Don't swat at them. Yeah. Yeah, just let them be, kind of shoo them off, no big deal. Working with apples, you'll learn that lesson. Leave the bees alone. Mm -hmm. Like, they're interested, they'll check things out, but if you bother them, that's when you have serious problems. <laughs> I'm still not comfortable with a bee, like, sniffing me, though. <laughs> She's also not awake. Allow me to talk a thousand miles an hour. <laughs> Let me tell you about yellow jackets, Susie. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll be quiet. Sip. <laughs> Sip. Condensation last night wasn't too bad. Our sleeping pads and our bags were just a little bit damp. We've had them basically just laying out, drying out. But yeah, we're ready for the day. After we get a couple hundred cups of coffee and little kitty here. <laughs> <laughs> what time did you get up? <laughs> 5.30. Oh Good morning. Puppy wants to play. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty's asleep. Oh, 
just in case you all haven't picked up on it, I'm Puppy, she's Kitty. Those are the nicknames that we have for each other. Feel free to vomit now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you all what we were surrounded by last night. Big rocks everywhere. Our campsite was right down there. We're back on the trail, hiking amongst these crazy awesome rocks. If you decide to come out here and do this trail, you are going to see some very cool things. Susie and I were talking about this last night. It's impossible to film it all. There is so much. The beauty is just off the charts. Check out this wall, folks. This is cool. We do have some uphill for today. There's two sections. Overall, it should be a pretty good day, I think. The weather looks beautiful so far. Definitely not cold. Perfect, it's perfect. Susie and I were just talking. This may be the most beautiful trip that we've done in Colorado. You all have seen the views at the top, but what you're not really seeing are the views down here. There's just so much foliage, it's hard for the camera to see through it and whatnot, but it is incredible. It really is something else. What do you think about this trail? This trail offers so much, and I agree. It's one of the most beautiful places we have hiked. It's so diverse. And it's one of those things where when you're hiking along, you really do have to take the time to stop and look behind you, look to your left, look to your right. You have views all around you. It is amazing. Woo. Shields on everyone. It's getting nice and warm. The sun is out. No clouds in the sky so far. Life is good. Where the hell are we going? This way. I was totally walking off trail. Okay, I'll follow you, Kitty. <laughs> like I said, some parts of this trail are not super defined. So far this morning, we are basically going down, down, and down. Whew, this is steep. Even going downhill, this isn't easy. We have made it to the very first real water crossing. We could either go across this log, which I'm not going to do, or we could go right through the water. That is what I'm going to do. Because of the water crossings with this trip, Susie and I both brought with us some very cheap, super lightweight flip-flops. So uh, everyone, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Let's see how cold this water is. But I can see it's deeper here than over here.
All good. Wow. We've been going down for most of the morning. Here in a little bit, we'll start working our way out of this canyon. We are going up, up, and up. Just made it to the top of this hill or mountain or whatever. This gigantic rock, I guess. This is a trail that you need to be in good shape for. It doesn't matter which way you go, you need to be ready for this one. What's that like, Susie? Uh, sickening. <laughs> Look at that mountain of rock. There's a hawk out here flying around. You can hear it. I don't see it at the moment. I saw him a second ago. He is huge. Or she. Whatever. Hmm. You just never know. You just never know. I'm dying to know, though. What's your pronouns, hawkbird? Before we did the water crossing back there, there is another trail. It's unmarked. It looks like it goes back basically to the beginning where we started at. The map does not have a name for this. The only thing the map says is house-sized boulders, dangerous pitfalls. That's it. It looks like it would be the shorter route to take, but at the same time, it looks like there's some sort of creek that runs through the center of it and you have to like cross it just non-stop. So Susie and I, we decided just to keep on going. Hearing brother against brother now Anger grows on divided ground Sometimes I think that I lost the sound Of the calm inside of me I wanna see love make a comeback I wanna feel hope Till kindness wins again I need to know peace is not defeated I need to know hey won't bring us freedom We've spent hours on the trail already and we've gotten lots of miles. Yes, it's a lot of work. It's grueling. It challenges me. But every minute of it has been worth it. Soon it's going to be time for a break and a snack. You all can see my shirt here. This is what I call backpacking professional. If you're a through hiker, you're familiar with these shirts. These are from Columbia. There's multiple versions. Some people like one version. Some people like this version. This is the Tammy Miami. Terrible name, worst name ever, but this is a nice shirt. It blocks the sun, it's breathable, and it's also moisture wicking. What do you got there, Susie? I just made an electrolyte powder drink. I like to keep these mixes in our food bag and make them, especially when you're sweating and working really hard. You will hike all day and realize that you haven't even taken a break to go to the bathroom because you are dehydrated. So these really help and they taste good too. They also help with headaches, big time. Mm -hmm. So Susie Q, what's our snack? Good old fix. No wonder this food bag weighs like a hundred pounds. It's packed full of like little bricks. Yeah. <laughs> this is the heaviest bag, I swear. But here's a tip for everybody. 
you know, we are at a pretty high elevation, more than what we're used to, mm -hmm. and carbs will help greatly. That's true. I think right now we've come down from roughly 12 to about 9, mm -hmm. and we're about to start working our way back up. When you bring a huge pound of jerky, then it's probably more than a pound. Let's eat it all right now, mm -hmm. since I have to carry it. <laughs> <laughs> We're done with our break, and now it's time to go uphill. We have roughly two miles for this section. So, ready or not, it's time to do it. The saving grace is that it has been rather cloudy today. So we have moments of sun, but then it's nice and cool under the canopy of clouds. Are you ready, Susie? I'm ready. Woohoo! Let's tackle it. Let's do it. That is not easy. No. And we're not done yet. I'm not done. So, we have been hiking on McCurdy Park Trail. Now we're going to take on Goose Creek and continue heading up and around. So we are still working on the two mile section of uphill. It is killer, it's killer. We have maybe Another half mile to go, something like that. We have some dark clouds forming up here, basically all around us. Susie, you've made it to the top of the mountain. It's going to dip down, go up just a little bit, kind of repeat, and then go straight down. Okay, good. I'm dead. <laughs> dead. That looks like blowing rain to me. What do you think? Right there. Right there. It could be. I think it might be. That looks like blowing rain coming out of that cloud over there. We are going to monopolize on this downhill. <laughs> oh, this is glorious. Whew, all right, everybody. Well, the conditions have changed. Remember when I mentioned that shady spot in the sky, right? That was rain and it is raining. I just put on my rain jacket. Susie's getting hers on. The Sony camera's up, GoPro is out. And yeah, for now we're going downhill. It doesn't look like this is going to be a major rain event by any means. So for now, I'm staying in my pants shorts and I'll put my rain gear on if I have to. Having the weather come in definitely makes this a little bit more dramatic, don't it? <laughs> I love it. I would love a good hailstorm. That would be cool. No, a hail thunderstorm. That would be pretty sweet. So now that we have our rain gear on, it will stop raining. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's how that works. All around us, we have some dark building clouds can't quite see what's coming towards us, but this is what is going around us right now. It looks like we got our rain gear on for no reason. Of course, that is how it goes. As soon as you get your rain jacket on, the rain stops. 
it has moved out and the sun has popped back out. So we're hoping to come across water soon and there we will stop, fill up, and probably find a place to take a long lunch break. I think we're doing fantastic with time-wise. You know, the uphill slows you down, it kills you, but then you seem to make up a little bit of speed going downhill. Right now, all I care about is water and not rain. <laughs> we went over that mountain and we both consumed all of our water. Well, I think we have like actually half a liter left, something like that. But, um, we're about to start another mountain, our last mountain for this trip. <sighs> we need water. <laughs> this water's orange. <laughs> it is time to take a load off, isn't it, Susie? Yes, it is. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> Here you go, Susie. Oh, thank you. Ladies first. Is that mm. good? Oh, so cold. We're going to take a nice long lunch break here at this campsite. I was looking through our food bag and deciding if we should eat some snacks for lunch or eat a meal. And I think I'm going to go with a full meal. The climb today that we did was very challenging. I mean, I know that they said like the hardest stuff is on the first part of this trip, but I would say definitely all of it's hard. I know we have one more mountain to climb, so I feel if we fuel up, we'll be better suited to get up it. And it is much smaller than what we've done. Luke went to collect more water so that we will have plenty to cook, eat, drink, and then we can fill up our bottles before we hit the final mountain. For lunch, I decided to choose this shepherd's meat pie from Mary Jane's farm. I can easily say that this has been one of the harder backpacking trips I've ever done. Me too. It's tough. It's incredibly beautiful. It is worth it. So make sure to get out here, make sure to do it yourself. This is a special place. Now we are hearing some thunder. It is banging somewhere over here. Mm, Cheers. You. Cheers, my friends. Cheers. Whew. Feels good to sit down. It does. Just sit here, not talk. Peace and quiet, best thing ever. Just zone out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, every time we take a break and sit down, my shirt dries out. Yeah. I get drenched while hiking. I'm just sweating so much. Mm -hmm. So the back of my shirt is drenched. It dries very fast. We've done a lot today, and we're not far from the finish line either. We have another mile or so down. Then we have 2.7 up another two miles down, something like that, and then four more. I sure made that convoluted, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. The plan is to eat and then just hike. We're not trying to finish today. We're not, you know, trying not to finish. We just decided we would hike and see how the day goes. Right. I can see how it can be done in two days. Oh yeah, if you're not filming, yeah. And you're in pretty good shape. You could do this two days mm -hmm. pretty easy. I definitely see why most people do it in three. Yeah. yeah. I, Come out here. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, you're going to stop a lot and stare. Ooh and ah mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Susie and I are back on the trail again. Finished up lunch, coffee, feeling good. Feeling a little bit sleepy, sitting too long. You know what I mean? Susie, sleepy? Uh, yeah. Coma. <laughs> Food coma. It is starting to sprinkle again, but I think it's just gonna move past us. For now, folks, we're going down. And then soon, right back up. Here's the rest of the carcass. I do not see the skull at this time. This is definitely a mud hole. Okay. 
<laughs> what we're coming up to are some beaver dams. They're the reasons why this is such a mess. That is incredible work. Susie, that's like nine feet deep. Wow. We have seen the beaver's handiwork. I'll tell you a little bit more about what they do. You see how they've begun chewing through this tree? They'll chew through the bark and some of the inner and then stop and they'll let the wind blow it over. Very smart. They let mother nature do all of the work for them. Here we go, we are starting the last uphill. Whew. Susie. This is the highest point left on the trail. Everything else is downhill and relatively flat. Behind us, it's rocking. You guys can probably hear that. It is storming. On us right now, it's just sprinkling. I believe we are walking away from that, so yes. <laughs> Woo! We have kicked serious butt today. And Susie back there, she is a champ. Yeah, Susie. I've really enjoyed this trail. I think the magic about it is, yeah, it's tough, but you don't really see a lot of people out here. We've seen just a handful of people, and I like that. There are trails and places that I have wanted to go, and they're so busy. You have to compete and race to get a campsite each day, and that is not the type of hiking I like to do. Hiking is hard enough. It's challenging when you have a lot of climbing and uphill to do. So why add the stress of competing for campsites? It's just not worth it. There are too many gorgeous places to go where you don't have to do that. We got everything here, at least to stay alive. And the time that we share makes it all worthwhile. The final update for this trip. Susie and I are roughly three miles from the van. Somehow we wrapped this up in two days. I did not expect that. Me either. We planned for three days. We have food for three days <laughs> and it's funny but one thing that you don't think about is you know once you cross a peak there weren't any good camping sites so you just keep going. There's also, yeah, that's a good point. Like, yeah. We went because we had to. There was no place to stop. We have stopped when we wanted to, and we've gotten a lot of miles in each day. And because of the downhill, I think you just can go farther than what you think you're capable of doing. So, yeah, there's a lot of sections where we would have stopped, but there was no pretty campsites or no camping at all. And I'm actually glad we didn't camp on top of the mountain. It would have been really, really cold up there today. So I think it's worked out well and hey, we're getting done. We're gonna be ready for dinner soon, but we'll be done hiking. So that's how it goes. To wrap up this final section, it is incredibly beautiful. We have come down from those mountains way over there and we walked the valley, came over here, then came around. It has been stunning, this final portion. Probably one of my favorite parts. Stunning. Mm -hmm. There she is.
I think there are multiple reasons why you should do the loop here counterclockwise. This view at the end of the day and at the end of the trip is amazing. I mean, it's gorgeous. But either way that you want to do it, it's up to you. And I would say all the views are excellent. I concur with Susie. No matter which way you go, the views are going to be amazing. Some people have said, like, if you go one way or the other, you know, the views are to your back. That's not true. The views are just everywhere. So don't worry about that. If you go clockwise, you are doing a ton, 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 ton of uphill. Counterclockwise, you're doing a ton, 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 but just not as much. I love downhill, Susie. Me too. If you like downhill, make sure you do the loop counterclockwise. Let's finish these last handful of miles. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. I need you are my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. And I saw you. Susie, we're done. Ah, oh, we are done. Oh, man. Want me to take your pack off for you? That feels so good. How would you describe that trip? Hard, but incredible. Grueling, but amazing. Yeah. I think it fits like it's epic in every single category, yeah. like the scenery, yeah. the views, the difficulty. Oh, man. We did it. We're done. Yeah. Two days. Two days. There was no point to stop. We were so close. So we will go do some dispersed camping and have dinner and enjoy the rest of the night. There was just no reason to stop. No reason to stop. So we just made it, made it all the way back. The trail is a little bit longer because the original loop that you will find online has some pretty major water at the end where there's just not a really good way to get through it unless you want to get wet, like way up. So we decided that we would take like a connecting trail. So we added a little bit of time. When you get back to the campground, you can go through the campground or you can take a wigwam and come back around the way that you started. You will have to take wigwam and come around. Otherwise, that's a freaking river out there. I don't think anybody goes through that. No, it's way, <laughs> way too wet, so. Oh man, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this trip. We appreciate you all big time. This has been epic, epic, epic. Yeah, we're done for now. It's time for us to go find a place to camp, have dinner tomorrow. We clean up, restock. We have some traveling to do.
Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. This is part three of the late 2021 epic road trip. Right now, Susie and I are out in the middle of freaking nowhere in Colorado. But let me tell you, this is a cool place. Very, very cool. You can see the van. You can see some buttes in the background. Oh yeah. Do you know what's really cool, folks? About 10 minutes ago, we drove past a Minuteman missile silo. Tomorrow we will stop by, check it out in a little bit more detail. You really can't get too close, but nonetheless, we'll check it out together. Susie and I, we've been on the road basically all morning. We got done backpacking yesterday, had an amazing time. And now it's time for lunch and also time for a shower. Susie, it's only 90 degrees here. It is very hot. We do have a breeze, which feels good, but yes, hot. <laughs> it is super hot, but we have this incredible breeze. So we have air coming through the back here. It's blowing this direction, going right into the van. Oh yeah, we're staying nice and comfortable. Susie and I have an awesome dispersed camping site overlooking these buttes and they are incredible. You can see the parking area is actually down here and there's a lot of coverings and whatnot, and there's no one there. We have yet to see anybody out this direction. We really are in a remote area. I mean, to get out here, folks, Susie, what is the closest town? I mean, do you have any idea? There's no gas in this area for 60 miles, if that tells you anything. No gas for 60 miles? That tells you how remote this place is, but it is gorgeous. For now, folks, Susie and I are going to have lunch, take showers, and we will bring you all back later this afternoon. Cheers, my friends. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. What an incredible place. We've been out here for numerous hours now. We took showers, just right out here in the open, middle of nowhere, no one's around. It's amazing. Things to mention, it's hot, like seriously hot. Hiding in the shade, fine. Step out into the sun and I think you would die within an hour. I mean, it's gotta be 130 degrees out there. Like seriously, it's hot. It's very hot. That is probably why we are here alone. <laughs> yeah. We did see someone come and park at the trailhead. I think they were gonna do the hike and they quickly took off walking, came back, jumped in their car and left. It is just too hot to be out hiking. But there is a breeze and what a great campsite since we have some shade mm -hmm. with the van. Yeah, it's like a dry heat, but if you're out in that sun, it's something else. This is a great way to begin part three of our late 2021 road trip. So we've come out to Colorado. That's where we're at right now. Yesterday and the day before, we were backpacking the Lost Creek Wilderness. Amazing. Without a doubt, the hardest backpacking I've ever done. Very hard, very grueling. Yeah. Yep, so today we're just taking it easy. We came out here to the Pawnee grasslands. Really, really neat, super remote. We were driving out here and I'm just kind of like, Susie, where on earth are we going? <laughs> I was looking up the history of this place and it's very unique, very interesting. You have the Pawnee Indians, you have the Sioux, you had the ranchers who came out here with their cattle. You had like these terrible winters where like all the cattle would die and everybody would go broke and leave. A very much tormented history that's what you have here. 
So eventually the park service took it over and there's good and bad, right? First off, you can disperse camp, that's great. You can go all over the place. I mean, there's roads, they go everywhere. Okay, so those are the good things. The bad is that there's energy production here all over the place. So no matter where you look, you are going to see it. You're going to see oil pumps, gas trucks, you know, all sorts of facilities and whatnot. You have the wind turbines as well. So even though the landscape is gorgeous, you're not going to be able to look away and not see that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's the negative. And oftentimes when it comes to land like this and even like BLM land and whatnot, if it wasn't for energy production, we wouldn't have those areas to explore. So it's a trade-off. I spoke at the beginning of this episode about the missile silos that are out here. There's roughly 12 missile silos, all Minuteman, in this area. And that's crazy. These are Minuteman 3 silos. Each rocket can go like 7,000 miles and contains three warheads. You don't think about it. You're out here, you're staring at these awesome mountains and whatnot, but yet there's nuclear missiles, like 150 nukes out here. Isn't that nuts? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Tomorrow, we will take you all to one of those silos, as long as we can find it. Where we are at is a mess of county roads, and they are all gravel. So hopefully, as we leave, we will see the silo again, but there's no guarantees. It was pretty funny coming out here. I mean, it was like one mile on this road, turn left. Two miles this road, turn right, turn left, turn right. And it just went on and on and on. Susie and I had planned on doing some hiking out here, but it's just way too hot. As I'm sitting here cooking dinner tonight, I was thinking everything that I was able to do for Luke with this campsite. I found him a campsite with no people, no bugs, it's cooling down, there's missiles, we're getting a red sky now, and there is cell phone service. Sounds like I worked pretty hard today. So check this out everyone. What we have here is steak, green peppers, onions, bacon, oh yeah. My friends, it is time to eat. Thank you so much, Susie. You're welcome. This looks awesome. It is now the perfect temperature. That I know for certain. Also, it's getting dark, so we need to eat fast. Yeah. <laughs> we had planned to tell you all more about the van, but I think we better just eat. In the future, we will have an episode dedicated to the van and our setup. It works for us. It's pretty simple. Also, compared to like what's out there, it's very budget friendly. I mean, you could say, anything's expensive but then again in the realm of vehicles like this we went the very inexpensive route we really did and i can say i have enjoyed this van tremendously this is just the first trip out of many and it has worked so well this entire trip has been nothing but back roads gravel roads dirt roads dust and it is so nice it is vastly different from the tundra all of our stuff is clean it's so cozy inside and clean and we've really enjoyed it so i think as far as traveling across the country this will be it yeah no doubt about it it's funny it's like with the backpacking trip we were roughly 20 30 miles away from civilization here we're about 60 miles so every trip has been like out in the middle of nowhere it's been great it really has been and this van has made it such a blast. You could do overlanding in any vehicle, it doesn't really matter, but this has definitely made it easy. So Much easier. All right, All right time to eat dinner.
It's freaking awesome, by the way. <laughs> is it? Uh huh. Oh man, that is awesome. Best day ever. Steak sandwiches, nuclear missiles. Susie, you all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. We had a fantastic night in the grasslands. It was perfect. Now, we're heading home. This is the final part, the last leg of the adventure. I can't wait. It's always fun to go out traveling, but it's always fun to go home, too. We've had some incredible experiences. I have to say, my favorite has been coming out here. Sleeping next to nuclear missiles, that's pretty cool. So <laughs> I'm a simple man, as you all can tell. On our way out of here, we will stop by one of those nuclear sites very, very briefly. I doubt I will actually even get out. I was reading stories about these missile silos. So I was reading this account of one person who was out here, went to the silo not knowing what it was, but had heard that there used to be old Minuteman silos out here that were decommissioned. And a Jeep showed up. There was three guys with, you know, machine guns asking like, what are you doing? Get away from the fence. And they ended up like searching him and stuff. So we definitely don't want to get searched. We don't want to have any problems, but we want to check it out. So it is a freaking nuclear silo. You know, you're being watched. So right. <laughs> <laughs> if I hop out and I'm running around with a big camera, that's not going to look good. So, all right, that's the first part of the day. Let's go. folks I think we have found it trust me this has not been easy this is such a mess of roads out here but here we go you all can see the white pole you can see the fence that is a nuclear missile silo It's amazing to think that nuclear missiles fly out of this place. You can see the blast doors. It's pretty crazy. And that's number eight, by the way. I think that is so damn cool. <laughs> Just so dang cool. So you may be wondering, why are there nuclear missiles out here in the Pawnee grasslands? Well, these were all set up in the 1960s, basically as part of the Cold War. We trained our missiles towards Russia, Russia had theirs towards us. So that was part of an agreement, the Mutual Assured Deterrence, or as many refer to it as the Mutual Assured Destruction. We had missiles on them, they had missiles on us. Everybody would receive catastrophic damage. All right, folks, now we drive. We need to find a gas station, fuel up. Let's go home. You ready to go home, Susie? Time to go home. Time to go home. We just came across another silo, folks. 
on our way out of here. What's interesting, it's the exact same setup as the other one. You have the white pole. Over there's the launch platform. Up there on that pole, you can see all sorts of cameras and whatnot. That was missile silo number nine. <laughs> That's so crazy. I like to think I'm kind of tough. Sometimes I feel invincible. Daytime, everyone. We got away from the Pawnee grasslands, but before we did, we ended up passing a handful of missile silos. We saw six, seven, eight, and nine, which is very interesting. Last night when I was doing research about the silos out there, I came across a story talking about missile silo number eight. There was, uh, back in the early 2000s, two nuns, two activists, hopped the fence. Apparently they spent numerous years in jail, in prison for that, so very interesting. <laughs> Don't do stuff like that. Don't do stuff like that. When they got out of prison, they went back. They did not cross the fence this time. Oh, <laughs> they learned their lesson, I guess. But I wouldn't last a second without your love. No, I couldn't last a second without your love. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, Susie. Cheers. Good morning. Good morning. It has been a few days since we talked. Today is our final cruising day, traveling day. We're almost home. This has been an epic trip in every single way, folks. I mean, thank you so much, Susie. Thank you. Yeah, and everybody, thank you so much for joining us with this trip. With our adventures, we try to show you the country, take you to cool places, and we've been to some very cool places. So to start off, to wrap this up, let's ask some questions. Susie, 
What was the worst part of this trip? Oh gosh, the worst part. Colorado really has some bad roads. They're just awful. They do. You do. They suck. Yeah. I mean, New Mexico, bad. Colorado, maybe worse. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's very bad. Yeah. Worst part for you. Worst part for me. Hmm. For myself, the worst part has been the drivers. I think we've been almost killed a handful of times. Like in every state, somebody cutting us off, some truck that's about to plow into us. We've been lucky, but like in every state, we've had a close call. Yeah, it's always a good trip when you make it home with no accidents. Yeah. So we still have half a day on the road today. It is a short day, which I'm excited about, but I anticipate that we'll make it home just fine. Then it will be a successful trip. That's right. <laughs> okay, Susie, best part for you. Best part? Best part. If there was like a standout moment, what was it? Best part. There's so many good parts yeah. to this trip. But we were in Colorado. We had a dispersed camping site. It started to rain. And all of a sudden, there's a rainbow. And then you see a double rainbow. It was just picture perfect it could not get any better than that it was insanely beautiful i mean it was just like lightly sprinkling rainbows popping out we're sitting on this hill we've got mountains it was gorgeous <laughs> and so that was definitely a special special part but there's so many special parts because when i woke up at pawnee buttes and looked out the window red sky it was gorgeous yes. so it's so hard to say like yeah the best part there's so many things that you all didn't see that we couldn't film that were just like amazing so it's like we're in colorado we just got done backpacking dispersed campsite we hear a howl in the middle of the night there's a freaking coyote 50 feet away yeah i mean and it was loud <laughs> it was big it was awesome when we got done backpacking we heard an elk in the forest like bugling away. I mean, it's something like you would see in a movie faked, but it was it was real. Yeah. Like we're walking up to the van, we're done, we're hot, we're tired, we had this amazing adventure, elk. And we had just walked past where it was too, didn't mm. see it. I mean, it was just so awesome. Talking about Lost Creek Wilderness for a second. If you plan to go there, be careful. A lot of people have died. A lot of people go missing, so be careful up there. This was, let's just talk about the backpacking trip for a second extremely difficult this was a hard trip and even though the forecast was for cool temperatures it was wrong it was hot very very hot on this trip so i mean like in that area you need to be prepared now, there is like a shortcut that kind of splits this loop in half and i'll show you on the map here if you're gonna go that way be extremely careful people get hurt people get lost people die I would not recommend going that way. It's very dangerous. And I think what happens is when you get to that shortcut, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're already 15 plus miles in. Yeah. And so a shortcut seems appealing. Also, there's the water crossing right there. And so like in the middle of summer, after a storm, the water's up high. You might be thinking, oh, I'm just going to skip this, take that shortcut. That's a bad idea. It's definitely not recommended to go that way. It's very dangerous. Unfortunately, with the weather being so wrong, it made our loadouts really heavy because we had to prepare for such cold weather that we thought was on the forecast. Also, you should know in that area, there is absolutely no cell phone service. None. So we arrived on a Sunday and had no updated weather information for days. We saw virtually no one on this trip. I think we counted like four backpackers in total that we saw. It was so pleasant, so quiet. I loved it. It was by far one of the best backpacking experiences I've ever had. Hard as hell, folks. I mean, it really was. Mm -hmm. But it was incredibly worth it. Talking about the van for a second, this is a Ford Transit. We will go into more information about this later on in a future episode. All in all, the adventure is not much to do with the van itself, but it is a key component to it. So we talk about it somewhat. This has been so nice. We've gone across the country numerous times in a Toyota Tundra. It works. This works so much better. It does. Yeah, so we will have more information about the van in the future. And if you have any questions, you can email us. I really think that's about it because we've got to hit the road. 
I am curious to see how much gas we spent. I think the van has done incredibly well. We've got our fuel for the day. That's it. Lots of coffee consumed on this trip. Mm -hmm. I think the trip was fantastic. It really was. Yeah. This was, without a doubt, my favorite trip possibly ever. Yeah. Incredible locations. I mean, just so much fun. Thank you so much, Susie. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We will have more adventures in the future. So with all that being said, thank you guys very much for tuning in. You can hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. You can support on Patreon, on YouTube. You can join the Wolf Pack. Enjoy some photos. We'll go over some stats with you all. Bye for now. Bye. Susie, let's go home. Let's go home. Let's go home. North Carolina, here we go. Yeah. Woohoo!